Are we ready? We're, we're, we're ready, Paul? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. I'd like to call the meeting to order for May 14th, 2024, which please rise for a moment of silence. Thank you. Please join in the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic which stands, one nation, under God, and the for and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call. Trustee Sheets. Here. Trustee Hannah. Here. Trustee Hey, is Hannah on? Yes. Hi, Hannah. Thank you for being here tonight. Hi, Hannah. Thank you for having me. Okay. Um, we'll move on to our commissioners. We have Joe Garrett with Free Bell. You still, the floor. still sorting. <laughs> I, was, I was expecting more. Do you want to wait? No, I don't like it. We can go on to the deck of you. I've got it. I've got it. Okay. So I, you guys, I've met, met you guys before. I've been here in the past. But now I'm officially your representative. I finally got them to do that yesterday. And I said, yeah, I'm going there tomorrow. Well, I'm going to walk through this, but just. You've got that. Good, because when the lady called me, I said, where are you located? And she said, half the time in Chicago, half the time in Columbus. Yeah. I said, have you been out there? No. And I said, I've been there multiple times. I said, they like me better than Scott anyway. So, so. <laughs> and I saw Ed at the OTA. He said something. I go, go tell her. Oh, tell God. The buttons. So, they said, we're going and we're going to, we're going to, we're going to. And I kept fighting because I'm like, you know, just let me go see that, right? Figure out the rest of them later. So they probably just may be the squeaky wheel. So what I gave you is a savings analysis. Uh, and it's how much money we've saved for the people that participated in the program in the township. Uh, I believe it goes back like to when the, when the most current contracts started. Um, and we, you have an AP version in Ohio Edison because you have both both utilities. Actually, a lot more in, in AP. It's done very very well in the savings, pushing a million dollars I think between the two. Um, you know, some of that has to do with how high the price of the utility, but still, as far as value to the community and for those people participating. Um, I think it shows a pretty significant savings. So I just thought that would be some in, interesting information for you to see. Um, that saved residents a million dollars on your, on your utility. Um, next thing I wanted to tell you is that AEP starting June 1st, they've already announced their the pricing has been announced. It is coming back. So it's going to come down to 7.68 cents. So we'll still be saving. Okay, we're still almost I think, a penny under that. Uh, but that'll be a savings there. But Ohio Edison's only coming down to 92938. So they're going to stay somewhat elevated considerably. So they'll be we'll still be seeing a really large increase. What was AP again? AP is 768 starting June 1, and Ohio Edison will be 92938. That is, um, now this will change, like, there's minor changes that affect those that are that are regulated, regulate, but you won't see the major bounces. Like, you know, it might go from 768 to 
seven six two or up to seven seven four. You know, it might bounce around a little bit for at the AT level, but typically they're going to be in that range. So we'll, the good news there is we're still saving money. Um, now, the two documents I brought, one of them is I'm hoping to get approved tonight. Uh, the other one is just a not yet, but I wanted to bring it so you guys were aware to talk about a little bit what we're doing for. We're looking out to you know May and June of next year um, when it's time to renew and the strategy of what we're what we're uh, planning on doing and how we're going to accomplish that. What Nancy has there is it's an amendment to the our contract, right? It's an amendment. And what that amendment basically is going to say is that we if, if we will set a price and as long as the price is under that we can sign a contract on your behalf now the reason why we want to do that is we did that with some we've been doing that with some from new communities so this is trade bell load data uh, we're pretty large in the aep market we have a total usage that we manage of 2.3 billion kilowatts a year. Now, about a billion of that is Columbus, so we're going to take that off because they won't be part of their negotiation is completed. But let's say somewhere around 1.3 billion. First Energy, which owns all the Edisons, company wide, we have 120, 192 million kilowatts in the uh, in their market. Keep in mind, the average consumer uses 10 to 11,000. So what we were wanting to do is to take all the all of our clients throughout the state in each one of the utility markets and, and put them out together because the number is so huge that we think we'll get a lot of interest from suppliers and potentially some suppliers that maybe don't compete in the aggregation space might be interested in these numbers, right? 10 million, 20 million, that doesn't, they're not getting an aggregation. But there are some suppliers, and our thought is if we're going to them with 190 million or a billion, you know, we're going to them with those kind of numbers. And, and like we do, a grand total, just so you know, as we do 2.7 billion, it's 2.8 billion in all. It's large, um, but that will return better pricing than what the typical market does. And but to do that, the only way we can do that is to have prior approval under a certain price to be able to sign the deal. And the reason for that is, is when you have 100 whatever 50 communities or whatever it is, and they all meet on Monday and Tuesday, you can't get to them. It's just impossible. And so we did that. We did that kind of on a trial for um, I had let's say eight communities in AES, and I think Larry had six or seven in AP. And we did that, and it, it, it worked well. And so we said, well, that, and we're not expecting all the communities to do it, but we think the majority of them will because it's the best strategy. The reason we're not setting anything right now is. We have to set a, a realistic price, right? We can't say, you know, hey, anything under seven. Well, that's not to your benefit because that's not part of the bid, right? And and right now we know where the market is. Why do that? We want to wait till we get closer. We want to see what this November's election does because that could have an effect on energy policy. And then after sometime after that, to say, hey guys. Set set that rate at this, and please adopt this and send it to us, so we can have the authority. That and then what we do, so you know, is we put that out. Then we just wait, wait, wait. If there's any downturn in the market, we say do it, do it, do it. You know, we call them back up. Okay, you know, they've already processed all the information. We we've, we've taken care of that, sending load data, all that stuff. So it doesn't have to be agreed on, then we can wait, you know, because every day energy change trends, right? Every day. Well, this way, if it does this, we can take advantage of it. It's the only way we can do it. 
because we can't do it, they won't hold it. It will not be held. And so, you know, all townships meet, we all meet at night. Right? And so the price is going to change next week, tomorrow morning. So a lot of times they aren't going to hold that that downturn might happen at two o'clock in the afternoon, be gone by four or five. So this is just a way to assure that we can use the time that we have to position it for the absolute best pricing. And I'm talking probably we're probably wouldn't pull a trigger on anything February, March next year. But I wanted to give that to you and let you know about it. So it's not like last minute thing somebody can say, hey guys, you need to do this right now. We're going to ask you to do it, but it won't be until we have an idea of what a good number would be to put in there. You know, it might be seven, it might be six, it might, you know, we don't know. We've got to kind of see where we're going. So you don't need this tonight? No, no, that was just to give you guys a heads up. When will you need that? Not Obviously until before February. Yeah, probably in a year. You know, now if we see, you know, if something, something weird happens in the market, in October, I might say, hey, sign that thing at your next meeting. Because why? Let's not wait because something really weird's going on. What if we find I don't, it I don't think it's good. Well, the problem is, is I don't, I don't know. But I mean, you could, I could, you know, we could throw a number in there. Uh, we could throw seven, anything under seven cents, we're okay. But that's going to be really high because I have no idea come the end of the year where the market's going to be. Like right now, the market has been fairly down. Now, how much more down is it going to go? Probably not a whole lot because um, we don't have coal anymore. They're not bringing this the, the solar on like they thought they would, right? That's all been delayed. And so we're kind of in a weird time as far as there's really not a lot of downward momentum to it. The only thing that we think could affect it, and when I say affect it, it's not like it's going to take it down to four, right? It might affect it a half penny if there's a change, maybe in how much natural gas is allowed to come up out of the ground. So, um, where if that's kind of being, you know, controlled a little bit more now, policy change at the federal level could change some, you know, pipelines that aren't being allowed to be put in, that all of a sudden get put in wells that aren't allowed, being allowed to be drilled, that all of a sudden start being drilled. Um, but I don't see it going, you know, I don't think we're going back to the four cent or, you know, I started with the deal deals. The cheapest we ever did was 4.1. That's not going to happen. We're probably going to be playing, you know, we might get, you know, potentially, if depending on what goes on and who's making what rules, we could get into the alpha fives again. Sure. So, I mean, if we wanted, wanted to do it tonight, we have it. We're probably we're going to file it and not touch it until later on this year. And if we wanted to, we could just put a number and say, okay, you know, seven cents and we'll be under that. Now, and I, and I can let the chair know, hey, we're, we're getting ready to act. Here's what we're doing. Just so there's no much. Um, if you want to do it tonight, but I'm not asking for it, but you could. What if we do it tonight and just give you the authority to put a number in when you decide? We can do that. Just add the amendment because all stone has given us power. If you want to make that motion, the one thing I would like to make, and this you've already done. So in our in our EMA, it gives us the authority to, you know, like when they do the recertifications. So this document, mm -hmm. when they do the recertifications, which is every two years the PUCO requires us to do, and we have to send them a check. And I think that's what we have to do in every two years, in my opinion. But it's that, and then also when we go out to what we're getting ready to do is what's called a refresh. And what that does is basically we send opt out letters to all the new people in the community. A few years ago, we had a customer call, and I forget where they were at, they weren't in your community, but they're in a the community. They said, I've lived here for two years and had no idea they had a program. I said, Really? So, what we started doing. Is anybody that opted out, they get ex we don't send it to them. People that are in the program, people that have alternate slot, no. It's just it's mostly it would be new people that have moved in. And we send the opt out and, and pull them in. And if they don't want, they can still opt out. 
but we send basically that out that letter. It's called a refresh. So we're getting ready to do that, get a capture because it hasn't been done in a while. And so it's 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 just a good thing because it, it allows the people that are new to your community. You'd be surprised at those numbers. Um, I'll try to get it for you. I probably wouldn't because we get a lot of phone calls from people that right. have no idea. Well, I used to own the mail house and the post office said, I think it was like 7% at that time. That was probably 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. We're moving and I think it's higher. Um, so there's a lot of, you know, it's just a way of letting them know this, this exists, right? Um, we had one not too long ago, some new mover moved in and you know, they're, they're getting their bill. They get their power turned on or the utility. They're getting a bill and they're going, holy cow. You know, and they had actually spoke to their neighbor who said, well, I'm on this. And then they called in and said, how do I get on? So, so we're getting ready to do that. Now to do that, we have to get the data from the utility. Okay. The contract you guys have, we have with you, gives us that authority. But unfortunately, AEP is a pain. And they don't want that whole contract. They want us to prove that we have the authority. So that other form, is the form that we send them that is signed by you that says we have authority to request this on their behalf. And so what we will do with that form is when we call AEP and say, hey, we need the new data so we can find these people to send them, they'll send it to us. I mean, and, they, they, and First Energy is not too bad. They will they will do it. But AEP just, they're they, they're paid. And so what this is, is just a single sheet that allows us, and I, yeah, it's filled out. But it's got Aaron's name on there, not yours. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You're not going to say your last name. I don't ask me to say it either. <laughs> She's really nice. So I um, no, I did it yeah. before, and he lost it. He was waiting for me to say her last name. I didn't. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, there's a, I don't need this, this second page, I just need this, so it's, um, it'll just be signature, print name, and date, and then what that does is that allows me to send that to EP and we'll get you the data. Uh, why, I don't, why aren't we sending something to every resident, because there's so many residents that have made moves to other electric Visions and then. so the opt out letter you can't you, know, you have to exclude you, you can't um, the way the opt out letter works now we do have another letter that we send to those people that have an ultra supply but the opt out it's because when you have an alternate supplier it's against the rules we can't automatically pull somebody out of those right and, and that opt out to, to make them aware of what yeah and we have a, we have a letter that we Typically, when, when we send out the opt outs, go out, and then usually a week or two later, we send a letter to those folks that says you're not eligible. But if you here's the information, and if you want to join, here's what you need to do. Now, that being said, a year, year and a half, a lot of people don't save that letter. We'll be but if they know, they usually will call the township, and the township will send it to us but or you, look on the website. If you just said that they get a letter that says they're not eligible, they're going to throw it out. Why aren't they eligible? Because they have an alternate supplier. But they can, they can. No, 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 they're not, they're not eligible to be opted in. They, Correct. Yeah, they, well, they, they sure were no, it is, no, it is. Once people get, I've had a lot of people, there's a few, not very many, but I've had people that file that letter, believe it or not. But for the most part, what it does is it lets them know there's a rate, there's a program, when it is. And then when theirs runs out, typically what they will do so they go to the township website or they'll call a trustee and they'll reach out to somebody and say, hey, what was that? And then usually they'll call our front of our office and we give them it. Because at any time somebody can leave that group that they've gone to, because we did, yes. we, we screwed up. And as if, as long as you're making yes. sure that you can get this rate with us yeah. and you can leave where you are. Yeah. Yeah, to, so just to increase the number of people. And I don't know if you guys have anything on your on your website or not. I didn't look around for it. Yeah. yeah, some of them do. Some of them are just, you know, some of them say, hey, here's what the deal is. Call this number if you want to be in. Some do that. Um, some, like I said, some, they just, I just talked to a guy in Dark, or in, uh, yeah, Dark County today. You know, they actually made it last Tuesday, but he was talking to and then one gentleman 
thought he was in it, but he got a letter saying that it was getting canceled. I said, well, then he wasn't in it. He was, he had his own deal expired. He says, well, what I tell him? I said, just tell him to call him. So that, that kind of stuff goes on all the time. All the time. Um, but yeah, it's still, you still will get those folks that, you know, it doesn't matter what you send them, they don't pay attention to it. So. If you feel the market's coming down, how about if we do this tonight, that we put it at six? And I don't know if it will get to six. That I can't tell. You. Right. But that would be adjusted. Could, couldn't we adjust it? We can adjust it later on. If we were going to do it, I could probably put six and a half. Because look how it reads is six and a half. So we're at six, eight now. Yeah, but it's come down. It's it's bounced us far down to six, two. Back, went back up to about six, five. So, fit in. so if we want to do it, um, we could put it at six five, and then if the market does start to go up and we don't see that as being viable or something changes, and that's the funny thing about the markets. You know, if 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 we knew, that's what I tell people all the time. Listen, if I knew, I wouldn't be here. I'd be selling. I'd be trading futures. I'd do it on my own island if I knew. You know, what if we just authorize him to put it in once it's determined? I would. I would put it in. I would, I would, I would put it. I'll take it else. Okay. Yeah. That way you're not giving me blanket authority. You just, I'd put six and a half. I'm good with that. Okay. Sounds better. And then if we need to adjust that, I said we have plenty of time. To do it. Then I, then I'll, I can just email it to you and say, hey, at your meeting, can you, can you just make a motion to adjust our break to this or to this so that we're, so, you know, that's, so it's realistic. That's all I got. So any questions you have? Oh, my card. The 614 number is my cell phone. You guys can call me in the evenings. You can call me on the weekends. The way I work is if you call me and I can talk, I answer the phone. So I have all kinds of clients that will call me on the weekends and I'll answer. And sometimes I may say, you know, you, know, you may hear some animals make a noise in the background I'm out in the barn, but I, I will tell you, but yeah, I'll take care of that or it's going to be tonight or, or whatever. But if something comes up, call me, text me, whatever, and I'll, I'll get it taken care of. So don't feel like it's a, it's not, for me, it's not a nine to five. I don't care if you call me at two in the afternoon or nine o'clock. I don't care. So. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Well, I will make resolution 43 to amend. To confirm certain specific and limited agencies authority that Trayvell has to act on our behalf. Is that good? Yeah. So to that, off of that. Yeah. Yeah. And then let's write in um, as long as the rate is six and a half cents or less. And let's write back in that pocket. Okay, as long as the rate is less than other amount zero six five per kilo wage, I'm not going to mess with that. Let's let's do the CCF just because it's on here. Let's do it at fifty five. That's probably not going to happen right now. The utility is cheaper than anything you get, but you guys don't even have gas, so we can just strike that. Do you guys not have gas much in the township at all? In Thornhill. So I thought yeah. Harris oh, so we were looking as the also because so, yeah. I was looking because I'm coming out and going, well, I guess now I need to figure out what's been going on there. And so I didn't see any. So let's just strike this. That's not active. Okay. I'm just gonna put since this would be through, can we just this says authority is limited and require that any new negotiated term shall be for up to um, I'm going to write three years or less because that's the next year. Okay. okay. And this will require these signatures. Oh. It is May 15, 2020. And also in that resolution, we will 
give you the authority to send out the letter. Give me the um, of that resolution that you agree to sign. You're gonna, you're gonna, uh, yeah. You're signing the authorization letter to give us authority to act in your behalf. Because they're both acting. The only reason we need this is a piece of paper. You know, they, don't, they just want a written pager that we need to shoot to them. You don't have to do one. Before. We don't have to go Why through and find three or four pages. This will cover both, but I guess okay. I've never asked for it. Okay, do I have a second? I'll second that. Roll call. Trustee Sheets? Yes. Trustee Hunter? Yes. Trustee Good? Yes. Said I've got your have, to have one of us sign this. Yes, so uh, signature here, printed name, and then date. Do y'all need to sign that? Maybe mm -hmm. easier to sign if you give your pen back. <laughs> While you guys are signing that, um, Chief, is there a way you could turn the camera on? Yeah. I know everything is locked out. That would be nice, wouldn't it? So, I mean, it's, record, it's been recording. I can, I've been able to hear any everything, but the video is not on. Of course, I have no idea. Everything's plugged in on this spot, but it's reported. So is, uh, do you guys think there are many calls or it just seems to, I mean, your participation rate is actually really high. Really? Every now and then. Yeah, it just goes yeah. in spurts. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, for percentage, and I didn't pull that number, but as far as, but it was, it's, 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 you know, I think that might have to do some with the, the cost at the utility level, but. You guys have a very high participation mm -hmm. rate. And the people that I get calls from may already be on it. They're just not sure. Or if I, if I unplug something, it would probably get to stop the meeting. I don't want to do yeah. That's why I do Yeah, I just leave it still out. Well, that will always happen. You know? I mean, and I'll try to make sure to, to have it on the recording. Then. Email. Yeah, yeah, you have I don't want anything about it. So at least, you know, because I, I, you know, I don't really agree anything. I'm a trustee. Okay. And one thing I don't like is people start calling me saying, oh, I got this and that, and I haven't seen it. So I have no idea what they're talking about. So at least if I have We don't have like to be blindsided. Again. Yes. So at least if I have it, then yes. I at least know what it is they're talking about. She's going to make a copy of sure. for us. Yeah. Did you get the, she got all of them? Yeah, all of them. Yeah. Um, so I always try to make sure that you have a copy of, hey, this is going out to the community. So if somebody calls, you'll know. Because they'll call, they'll get, I mean, they'll get calls. I had one trustee, he passed away, unfortunately. He'd always call whenever he get uh, anything from any offer from any, like, he would call. And I figured out after a while, he was just, like, giving me a hard time, right? But he'd call me, well, what is this? That, you know, I'm trying to figure out, he's anything else to talk about. Finally, I figured out that he was just tripping my chain. But, um, so, but, yeah, we tried Make sure that you have that. That way, too, they call and they're saying, Hey, I have sent you something. It's probably not something from the program. But yeah, if you, if you have you. any questions, just give me a call. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Huh? Thanks for coming. Yeah, I was excited. I've been pushing hard. I'm like, I want to go. You know, <laughs> and I like that. I want to go. That's because we're close up to <laughs> There you go. Camera up. Everything's plugged in and run everything else out. I'm afraid if I unplug something, it'll stop it. I mean, I can try, but everything's plugged in. So for this recording. Okay. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right, guys. Thank well, you. Unless you need something else, I'm going to head back. Okay. Thank you. Any problems? Call me. Thanks. All right. See ya. Bye bye. Bye. Okay, now we will move on to our Sheriff's Department report. Deputy Atkins. Good evening, everybody. My name is Dan Atkins with Sheriff's Office. For the last two weeks, we had 122 runs, 12 reports, six full arrests and citations. Breakdown of the 17 travel crashes, 18 medic runs, two theft reports, one missing person, 12 suspected person or vehicles, giant traffic expenses. Further breakdown was on April 30th, that responded to the 4500 block of London Bridgeport Road and reported the theft. The homeowner responded to an online ad and sent a deposit to the local payment service. Purchased several items that were listed for sale. After the victim had sent the deposit, the item was removed and the victim was not able to see a refund. Uh, that investigation is ongoing. Our detectives subpoenaed the uh, online companies. We are in the process of getting that homeowner's money back. On the second, the deputy responded to the 600 block at London Airport Road and the report of the theft of the car. Determined that a, a, four a 2018 four wheeler was taken out of an unlocked barn. That's listed in Leeds, and we're trying to find it. We think it might be up in Columbus. And on the fourth, that response to Kelda RV Metro Park, this is the park rangers, the highly intoxicated individual. We think we take the individual back to their home and combative and eventually have to transport her to Jackson. One thing I didn't put on here is I've been working up and of course with the dog parking plant, talk to 13 residents currently about that. So I'm trying to. Keep work through that and uh I'll eventually have finally charged to some of the homeowners up there. Just trying to get all the reports in. So questions I can answer. How about the illegal dumping on Lambert at the tracks? Working on that. Our uh our current environmental deputy has retiring. They're switching his caseload over to new building. So if they're not going to pick it up, then I'm just gonna pick it up and uh run with it. So I didn't drop it, I sent it over to them. Fortunately, they have not followed through with my liking, and I keep arguing, but I'm still pushing. So, I'm kicking and screaming. Thank you. Thank you. Let me step out, but I got to jump the fire with a nervous breath. I got to go. All right. Thank you. Hey, Robert, Road Department. <clears throat> well, we hosted our spring cleanup on the third and the fourth. That is one of the busiest cleanups we've had in a long time. It was just a steady stream of people both days. Um, I have no totals on the amounts of tires or anything yet, but there's a lot of stuff. Uh, our seasonal help started today, yesterday. I'm sorry. Um, I still need to get with Paula to see what I need to have them fill out for tax purposes and stuff. Um, so far, he seems like a really nice person, but I think he'll do well. Um, Garrick Road, the bridge that they were repairing is finished. It's open to traffic, but it's not completely finished. They still have to put the side rails on it. <clears throat> and then I had a complaint about after one of them, we had it in several spots where after that one heavy rain, we had to go back in and fill in spots along the berm. I used some bigger stones, so hopefully it'll hold next time we get a bigger rain like that. And then finally, I was contacted about a lady. They were wanting to know if it would be, if they would be allowed to dig the hole and bury their mother's remains instead of having the township do it so they could avoid the $150 charge. I told her I'd leave it up to the board, but my thoughts are this time i don't know if i want to start something like that and just have it snowball from here on out so i know what i'm thinking then wouldn't it just kind of be a free-for-all for everybody yeah, yeah. doing their own thing I, I told her i would ask um i haven't i was going to try to call around to some other cemeteries but i we were busy doing stuff today and i didn't have time but i mean you got any thoughts on it? Are there any state laws? That's something else we'd have to look into. You would, well, I mean, you get some of them, like in Southern Ohio, some of them old family cemeteries, but 
I don't know about a public cemetery like ours. So it's just, I suppose that's something I could ask. Or I'd say let's not do it for now. And I suppose it. I think that's probably I the wise no choice. It's probably the better option. I feel like that could turn into a whole bunch yeah. of other things. Next People thing digging, digging on the weekends. And, yeah. Uh, not in right spots. And yeah. 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 I mean, that's the only thing is. There, there are pa there are papers, paperwork we get along with like each cremation and burial that I turn in the clerk, and it, it, you'd be having trouble getting those too. I feel. So. Do they already have a spot? They yeah, they, they have a spot. spot. They just want to dig herself. There. Okay. Yeah. That's all I have. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, we'll go on to fire department, Lieutenant Kuno. Um, back right aside, we had Medic 231, and actually the grass fire had general maintenance done. Personnel, uh, we have received a resignation letter from Cole Smoot, effective April 22nd. Uh, to add Travis Bazin on to part-time status. I'll make resolution 44 to hire Travis Baston for part time firefighter paramedic. Do I have a second? I'll second. Roll call. Trustee Schutz? Yes. Trustee Hummer? Yes. Trustee Good? Yes. That's for uh, equipment. Uh, our forecast meter has numerous unrepairable issues. Uh, looking at ordering a new meter at a cost of twelve hundred dollars. Replacing the current one was going to be just as expensive, if not more. So, uh, water rescue suits. Um, we have a couple of well, significant damage. Uh, one is unrepairable, and uh, the other one will require extensive repairs. We're looking to uh, purchase two of the Mustang suits or twelve hundred dollars a piece. Looking for two of those. How many of those do you have total? Right, um, five. So we have four on four in the bags on the boats that are equipped, but the rubber linings and stuff around the neck and feet have just disintegrated. We took them down to. Uh, Underwater connections last time, and they repaired a couple of them, but some of them, yeah, yeah they're just old and need replaced. So, but you have five, you keep five total. That's what we had, yes. So, okay. to replace um, the ones that are completely done, it's, it's two for right now. So, we have probably three that are really good. Um, once we purchase these, we'll have three decent ones. Mm -hmm. We've been training on the train house on Bay Road, or I'm sorry, Bigger Road. Looks like going over there pretty much every day. Their medic school was still ongoing. No changes there. She wanted to make a motion to authorize the to enter the end of the contract with Medicount for EMS billing. I'll make resolution 45 to authorize fire chief to enter into a contract with Medi-Cal for EMS billing. Do I have a second? Second that. Roll call. Trustee Sheets? Yes. Trustee Hunter? Yes. Trustee Good. Thank you. Yep. Any old business? New business. I have one announcement for the Memorial Day service. It will be held Monday, May 27, 2024, at 1 p.m. at a Grove Cemetery. We would like to give a big thank you to West Jeff VFW Post 7005 for graciously taking over this ceremony for the VFW post who did it for years and now had to disband for lack of participation, which is very sad. 
So, Lieutenant Kuno, we pass that on to so, so, so. to your department for whoever's on that day for participation and anybody else. Yep. yep. Anything else to announce? Okay, Paul. Okay, um, most everything I have is newsletters. Um, I did receive an email from my gentleman with Otarma who wanted to set up a date to come out. Um, they are going to do, um, a, he's an appraiser, um, and he was wanting to know if we had blueprints of the buildings um, and some other information like on vehicles, et cetera. And, I gave him the chief's number and also Robert's because um, they would be more knowledgeable about that. And I told him as I was unaware of any blueprints of the buildings um, and that nobody really here would have been around when the building was built. So unless anybody knows of any more information than that. So, but um, yeah, so. <laughs> That's so why I told him, I said, I don't know of any, so. I remember when it was built. Yeah, but I mean, I've never saw any blueprints around, so I don't know. Like I said, pretty much everything else I have is um, newsletters, um, notifications of meetings from, um, so let's see here, the Planning Commission, um, they had a meeting on, um, well, they had a meeting scheduled for May the 8th, but that was canceled. Um, like I said, everything is anymore is pretty much newsletters. There's very few. I did get some information from, um, on, um, oh shoot, what did I, I forwarded it to Robert. It was like for grant information from Ohio Public Works where they updated information and stuff. So I gave him all of that information. So, like I said, that's pretty much everything I have. Thank you. Anybody want to speak? Are, are we all caught up on all of our employees' payroll issues that we had a while back? Um, what I've done is um, I wanted to get two good payrolls done before we go back. Um, I'm going to have to um, put some information together and um, give it to the trustees and stuff on how we want to, um, if we want to leave things the way that they processed out or if we're going to go back and make corrections. Um, I did talk to um, Ohio Police and Fire, and they told me just to go ahead and do it. Um, we were going to originally, if ADP would have done what we had requested when we requested it, the report that would have went into Police and Fire would have been partially taxed and partially non-taxed. But then because we had the issues, um, there really wasn't any technically that was non-taxed for that report and he told me just to go ahead and send it in that way and then he thought everything would wash out so that's what i did so so we do have everybody caught up in the, everybody's currently being handled the way that we requested it to be so yeah Anything else? Okay. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? I'll second. Roll call. Trustee Sheets? Yes. Trustee Hunter? Yes. Trustee Good. Yes. Thank you for having me. What did you do? We didn't come. <laughs>